All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, this is a quick heads up. Uh, I want to let you guys know that both audio and video will be recorded. So uh, if you guys have any questions you guys want to say, feel free to ask for the microphones and we'll give you guys and I'll make this all available within maybe a week or two, something like that. And we'll go from there, all right? All right, so this is, it's all subjective. This is an interactive panel discussion focused on moving the community forward through our personal endeavors. Um, I wanted to say a big thank you to Atlas Workbase for allowing us to be able to utilize this space for the second time. Uh, shout out to uh, Fai and uh, Kim. They've been amazing by helping us uh, host these things here and super, super supportive. So I'm definitely appreciative of that. Um, this is the second one. Last, uh, last month I did one, it's called, the topic was, um, is social media the modern day resume that was still available, uh, both on my website and on YouTube and on Coding X Small Talk. Uh, so check that out, it's on the podcast and uh, yeah, be good. So this one, uh, this one is, is nightlife here getting worse or is we just getting older? Um, it's all subjective, you know, pretty much that's what, that's what this is all about. And uh, I felt like I couldn't talk about this topic without having panelists that I felt like have been active in uh, nightlife for, for quite some time. I've only been here for about three years. And although I do events here and there, I can't fully say everything I want to say because I don't know about all the changes that has happened. I don't know about... Uh, all the clubs that's been here. I don't know about all the bars and lounges that used to be here prior to me that kind of made up for uh, Seattle's nightlife at the time. So I feel like you guys have kind of been here and been able to uh, see that change for what it is. So uh, very appreciative of you guys being here. Um, without further ado, I want to let you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves, let them know what you guys have been doing and uh, how you got in the industry and kind of go from there. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Miss Casey Carter. I'm currently the host of the Glow Up podcast, and I do the overnights on Cube 93, as well as the I host the new and local music show on Sunday nights, 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. I have been kicking it in Seattle since I was like 16. I had a fake ID. First club was DV8. It's not oh. even, it's, it's demolished now, but uh, <laughs> so that should let you know I'm a total vet in this game. <laughs> um, but that's how I started my journey into where I'm at today. I used to just kick it, meet people. Everybody would call me because I would be the person to know what was popping. My friend told me before I should do a website called findaclub.com because I was the only person who knew where and when the club was popping. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> the big idea, what statute of limitations on that? What's the actual limitations on fake ideas? You can't be putting that out there like that. Right? <laughs> 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 right. uh, I'm Mikey McLaren. Um, I'm a curator in the city. I do a couple different events. I have a recurring weekly at a Q nightclub called Pop Secret. And um, I also host events as well, uh, both here in Seattle and a couple other places around. Um, definitely have been around the, the town for some time. I grew up in Tacoma, moved up here for school. Uh, right around like 2021 20, and uh, have been kind of involved in the industry in a couple different ways ever since. So, yeah. What up, Mikey? Uh, I go by Lace Cadence. Uh, been doing music in Seattle for quite some time. I DJ, do a lot of Afrobeat stuff. Uh, I grew up in the city, so I like to see myself as someone that knows both sides of the city. Uh, but yeah, I just do music mainly. I am Lily. Um, I own an event company called Miami Fling, and I do model management called Million Angels. So we can book models for commercial. Um, I've been in the nightlife for a minute, started in high school. Um, I collab with people. So I try to bring like the down south culture of hip hop to Seattle so you guys can get that vibe. And yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And um, I want to also say last time I let the panelists say what they had to say to do the introductions. Uh, they were very humble, like you guys. So me being the guy that I am, I like to brag. So I like to, <laughs> I like to talk a little bit about each and every one of you guys. Uh, starting off with Casey, um, when I first moved to Seattle, I've always was looking for 
uh, someone that was also very interested in media and radio because I never had that opportunity uh, given to myself, um, kind of just trying to figure out how I could be a part of radio and uh, things of that nature. But then when I've watched Casey, uh, she's been doing a lot of amazing things, both just throwing parties, throwing events, but then also being able to balance that, uh, being on the radio, having her podcast going on for quite some time. And I've, I've always been a fan of the stuff that you've been doing. So I'm very appreciative for you being on this panel. Um, with Mikey, it's a funny story. When I first moved to Seattle, this guy was the very first person that I knew in nightlife. Very first person because uh, Tanoa introduced us and I was looking for a mentor to be able to allow me to be able to MC parties. Like I wanted to kind of do what I was doing in, in Atlanta and come over to Seattle and do the same thing. And uh, to know Spencer was like, yo, I know the right person. And uh, one of my first events was actually coming to Baltic Room. So coming over there and it was from there, our, our relationship was- You need to MC more often too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from here. So, <laughs> yeah, so, I, <laughs> so I, I'm appreciative for how our relationship has gone as well. Uh, with Lace, I've met Lace uh, a couple of times in and out through multiple people and stuff, but we started really getting closer um, more last year. We started getting closer, but then I've also realized that super multifaceted, you know, how, how he just said he, he's, he's an artist, he's a producer, he's a DJ. I came to a couple of the, the Flavor of Blue shows over at uh, um, the rooftop, uh, Frolic, Frolic, yeah, Frolic. But then also I realized like, man, You've been killing it when it comes down to this Afrobeat shit, man. You've been, you've been killing it, man. Seriously, bro. And I, I think it's been a long time for Seattle to kind of catch that wave. So I'm appreciative of what you've been doing. And of course, like Palm Wine Experience been doing as well. So very thankful for you being here. And of course, Lily, uh, just like you mentioned before, I've met you through a couple people here and there. But I was always appreciative for you being able to bring that down south vibe that i've been kind of missing for such a long time like i've come came to a couple of events I've had a lot of beautiful women from your uh your modeling agency thing so i've always been like oh khalib khalib was even telling me he's like yo you got to go to lily's events like she's always bringing like the people that you've never seen just like there <laughs> like i'm like yo where 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 they be at you know so i'm uh, i'm a very appreciative for the stuff that you do uh for the seattle community as well so uh thank you guys for being here uh yeah um as I mentioned before and kind of through the event bright and stuff like that i wanted to also let you guys know that this is not going to be the panel where I'm going to kind of ask these panelists questions like, when did you start or how long have you been doing this? All these questions that you can easily go onto their website and stuff and do. I really want to try to have some type of discussion about this topic because I feel like it's super important. A lot of people come to Seattle and want to do some other stuff aside from moving for work. And then a lot of people end up leaving because they can't find something to do. So if we can find a way to kind of move this community forward, this nightlife industry forward, I think uh, Seattle will be uh, a very prominent place for people to kind of be at. So um, I can go ahead and start off like this. So <clears throat> the questions I'm going to be having, is going to be for, and, and don't worry, also I'm going to make this PowerPoint available for everybody so you guys can be able to kind of look at that. Uh, <laughs> the little Kim. Ah, I get it. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's going to be four types of questions I'm going to be asking. Of course, the general questions. These are going to be just questions that I have to ask for the sake of the panel, just to kind of get things going and moving. There's going to be thoughtful questions, thoughtful questions being, um, I just put a little bit more effort into thinking about this question based off of what people uh, respond with. And random questions, there's no way you could have even studied for this question. Um, but this one, I feel like the question that I have that is random, I feel like is going to spark a lot of uh, discussion about it, about this topic. And then subjective, obviously because of the panel name, uh, there is no right or wrong question. I mean, excuse me, there is no right or wrong answer. We just talk about it and kind of see where we can go from there. Let's see. So when I first started thinking about this topic, 
I did a little grassroots survey. I kind of was like trolling a little bit on Instagram and Twitter. I was trying to figure out like, are we really getting older? Or is nightlife just getting worse? You know, I put a little photo up, I did a little survey, it was a little, I had a little drink in my cup and it was kind of something I said, like gave a, <laughs> gave a little something, something just to figure out if, if nightlife is getting really worse or are we just getting older? And for Instagram, out of the 86 people that voted, mind you, these are not people that only live in Seattle. These are people that follow me on social media. 48% um, of the people said that nightlife got worse. And then 52% of the people said that they're too old to party. Fairly close. And then there was also a couple of people that had mentioned that uh, it was both or it was changing which I do appreciate that type of feedback as well. And then when I went on Twitter, my engagement is not as fire as on Instagram, but still it was cool. <laughs> Out of the 51 people that voted, 57, excuse me, 51 people, yeah, that voted, 57% pe 57 of people said that nightlife got worse. And then 43% of the people said that they were too old to party. Now, how much value and weight does that hold? You could say probably not as much because this is not only for the Seattle area, but this just gives you a little idea of what people, millennials, are actually thinking about right now. Nightlife statistics, you know, so real quick, and I'm going to make sure you guys can kind of chime in on this as well. Um, so the average person buys about 2.3 drinks whenever they go to a nightclub. nightclub. Usually whenever I like to go out, I like to pregame at my house. I bought, a, I bought a bar cart just for that reason. But the thing about it is, like, no matter how much I drink at my house, I still end up buying drinks at, at the club, and I end up wasting money. Millennials right now, in, in regards to 2019, are between the age of 23 and 38. Respectively, sometimes they kind of cap it off at 35, but I, I, I believe that for the most part, all of us are uh, millennials. Um, and then also what I noticed too was that 55% of the consumers that are going to these nightclubs are also saying that they went out the same amount of time that they did last year. And then of 70% of all of the millennials, 2019, say that they usually go to the same place all the time, every single time they go out. So when I read that, also made me think about how can most people say that nightlife is getting worse when you're pretty much going to the same place all the time. You're like you haven't really gotten the chance to actually explore. You haven't really gotten the chance to actually go to somewhere else and have a drink somewhere else and go party somewhere else, you know? 70% of people, 70% of millennials, excuse me. And then 15% of millennials actually are only going to places that are actually less expensive for them. A lot of things that people mention when they go out, they say they end up spending too much money. It's only 15% of the people, millennials, excuse me, that are actually going to places that are very affordable for themselves, it won't burn their pockets. So that's just something to give you something a little bit to think about. So just to open up the discussion, I want to know how has operating within the... How has operating within the nightlife industry changed the way you attend nightlife events as a consumer? Feel free, whoever wants to kind of go in and start that conversation, go ahead. And if anybody in the audience wants to jump in and kind of say something, oh, go, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead and feel free to do so. If, go ahead, yeah. Okay, I, I, I guess that I'm, the, uh, I'm the, the senior advisor on the panel since I've been <laughs> the most involved in it. Um, for me, I'll say that like, and speaking for myself, I think I try my best to not do that. Mm. And I think that that probably is the, the biggest issue here is that, unfortunately, a lot of people get comfortable going to one single place yeah. here mm. and it becomes a, just the norm. Yeah. You know, you see your friends out at a spot, you have a great time one time, why not go back and have another great time, right? Yeah. And eventually it becomes a thing where you assume that this might be the only place I can have a good time mm -hmm. where you may have just missed a whole four months of something, you know, cracking off somewhere else. Yep. Um, for me being in nightlife, I definitely feel like I'm jaded that way. Um, 
because I'm always, you know, at the places that I'm at. Um, I think I noticed it the most when I uh, took over Baltic Room back in 2014. And um, being there every single weekend, because prior to that, I was hosting events probably three times a week at different places, as well as doing kind of like one-off things everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we took over Baltic Room, um, we were always there because that was the situation was a little bit different. We had, you know, kind of had a stake in the whole thing or whatever. So it was, it was in our best interest to be there all the time. So doing that for two and a half, three years and always being there, I, after that was done, I eventually was like, okay, well, now where do I go? Cause yeah. even trying to keep my ear to the street that way, not actually being out in it and seeing it, it made me like, just kind of like lose, like kind of the pulse on what's happening to a degree yeah. as a consumer. Oh. Um, additionally, I don't like paying for shit now because I, <laughs> I haven't for 10 years. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest about that. Like it just, it is what it is. Yeah. I haven't paid for, you know, drinks cause I'm running the party for 10 years. So when I go somewhere and I'm like, Oh, why am I paying $12 for a, uh, vodka soda yeah. you know and this party's not even like super tight yeah and it could be busy but it's more about like at that point the production value of everything and is this really worth the the price that they're putting this at absolutely but that's to a degree me being jaded that way knowing that okay oh i you know might have done it this way and not charge this much for this or not charge this much to get in or this or that so maybe i would pay that if i was just going out and not being a part of you know, production most of the time and seeing it from the inside out, seeing it from the outside in, I think is a little bit different that way. So absolutely, it's, it's, I feel like it's a little bit of, for me, knowing too much, but at the same time, I do think that in Seattle to a degree, I think that that kind of buyer's remorse can exist just because of the fact that people don't see enough of different things and they keep yeah. themselves to one place a little bit too much. Green, green, green. Do you guys want to go over there? No? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so how has operating within a nightlife industry changed the way that you have attended nightlife events as a consumer? So on your off days. Yeah, no, that is true. Okay, I'm trying to think. Because before I used to go out. And I just would go wild. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, let me just say this. We live in Seattle. We don't live in Atlanta. We don't live in Miami. We don't live in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. So I know what to expect from this city because yeah. I have been kicking it that long. Um, so when I'm off and I am going out, I'm not expecting this whole, like, I don't have high expectations. I know I'm going out. It's fucking cold. Like, clearly I want to go have a good time. I'm going to make myself have a good time wherever yeah. I'm at. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to see someone. We're going to get drinks. Somebody's going to see my fiance, get him drinks. We're going to have a good time. We're going to get food after. And, you know, yeah. so I guess for me, I look at it as like, it's just a time out. Like it's chill. I'm chilling. I'm not expecting too much um, because when I do have to throw an event, mm -hmm. I'm like working and it's stressful. So yeah. I guess just that's yeah. how I look at it. If I'm, if, if I'm going to go somewhere and I'm looking for an extravagant time and I'm setting those high expectations, I'm going on an airplane and I'm going to a different city. That's just the truth for me. Straight up. Damn. <laughs> That's real, though. I feel it. Though. I feel it. Uh, for me personally, Anthony, I feel like before when I used to go out, I used to just be like, I'm going out like tight. Yeah. And I would just go. It would just be to go out and kick it. Yeah. But getting into the industry, especially with app being it based around Afrobeat, yeah, it's changed the way I do look at going out quite a bit because I'm like, oh, I, I don't really want to go to that place because they don't fuck with nothing with any culture ever. That's I like so you. now I have a whole nother before I was just straight consuming, just yeah. like rap music, cool, this, that. But now when I'm in it, I look at it like. It's usually all based off black culture. Yeah. So how is there any type of effort to involve yeah. any type of black culture? Because there's such a lack everywhere. Yeah. So I think that's changed that for me a lot. Now I'm like, I don't really like fuck with this yeah. like I used to because it's just like there's no effort. Yeah. Would you say, just to, just to piggyback off of you real quick, would you say that you're more responsive to going to events that are supportive of what you got going on? Versus Not even what I have going on, just like something with some substance. Yeah. Something with... That's going to like 
better me somehow. I'm not looking ever when I go out, but I'm like, yo, am I going to come away from going to this with anything yeah. other than just drinking? Yeah. I look for that for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Just looking from the inside and outside, like, you know, it's stressful. Like Casey said, like throwing the event, just making sure everybody's having a good time. It gets really stressful. Um, having a guest list too, but like with SPD, Seattle Police Department and the crowd that I bring, yep. they come in and they try to check things, you know, making sure like everything's going well, you know. So my events are always, I try to make sure that there's always on top, you know, things like that. Especially like me going out, I don't want to pay for anything like Mikey said, like Mikey said you know, yeah. like because yeah. we're just used to it. Like we're getting in for free, you know, we bring people to your bars and your clubs and yeah. I try to switch it up. But I fell in love with the down south culture. So I'm trying to bring that to Seattle, even with the marketing the flyers, you know, like the nightlife um, up here, I feel like it's dying because like we don't have a lot of hip hop and they're trying to take that from our city. You know what I'm saying? Like where you have versus Club Q where you do have hip hop, but it's more like Caucasian people, you know, and more like you have at stage. Now you got hip hop, you got that kind of vibe, you know, but they don't want that in our city. And I feel like with everybody, it's like they're used to one place. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are just just comfortable. Like, you know, case like you're saying. So if you're p going to a place where you're comfortable at and you're going to a place where you're getting denied at the door, you know, it's, it's weird, you know? Yeah. But I just feel like with the nightlife, you just got to have the right marketing, the right tools, you know? Try to not upcharge so much. But then again, this is a groupie city. So I've done Sunday nights where I try to do Sunday nights like they do down south. Yeah. A lot of people don't go out because we have work the next day. You get what I'm yeah. saying? So we're, versus you have Fridays and Saturdays, you know? it's more marketable for yeah. Seattle. It's not a Monday through Sunday thing, you know, yeah. what we have. But like Casey said, take a flight, you know, Vegas, Miami or whatever. Yeah. But I just feel like here as a culture, like I just want more hip hop up here. You know, yeah. I feel yeah. like we don't have that. Yeah. I want to say something off what Lily said, because yeah, you know what? Seattle, we're, we like, com like, we like familiarity. We like to be comfortable. So it's like, we do like, like I noticed that if something is popping, everyone is going to go there because they know what to expect. They know the security guards. They know the bartenders. That's just the type of people we are up here. Yeah. We like what we like. And if it works and it's cool, then we, we fuck with it. When something messes that up, something else pops over here. We all go that way. Yep. Absolutely. That's just how we are. Absolutely. Um, I just want to touch on something Casey said and just ask a quick question really quick. Um, obviously, if you throw an event, if you throw an event, if you throw an event, you want people to be there. Obviously, you want to be successful, right? Mm -hmm. Earlier, you said that if you have, you have an expectation for Seattle Nightlife and if you really want to have just like a crazy, memorable, like best time of my lifetime, you hop on a flight. How does that ever change our culture if that's your mindset as a creator yourself? I don't know if I want to change the culture here. That's the thing. Yeah. Like I'm very comfortable with being chill, like not having to buy bottle service for going out on a Saturday, you know, just a regular time or I don't know. I, for me, I'm comfortable. And because it's because I'm getting older. If I was like 22, 23, like then I would probably have a different mindset and a different strategy about it. Um, but for me, like for the 99 and 2000s, that's the, um, the party. Okay, so that I will. Um, it's very chill. Like you don't got to come in dressed up or anything. Like we all wear sneakers and jerseys and stuff like that. Like that's the expectation I have for the event I'm putting together because that's the experience I want at the age I'm at. So I guess for me, I'm not looking for those like grander type of celebrations every single weekend in this city. And that's just my personal preference. You know, I want to say something real quick based off of you saying the sneakers and stuff. <clears throat> I remember when I first went to Baltic Room. This was a time that we and me met, you know. Um, I came in a suit. <laughs> I came in a suit because I was like, you know, nightlife. I'm about to, you know, I'm about to go. I'm about to have a, a grand old time, you know. I walked in. I walked into Baltic and I was like, oh, man, this is not. This is, I, I feel, I feel very uncomfortable now. I, I left the house feeling like, man, I got a haircut. I just got to the city. I'm about to feel, you know, and I got in and I felt very, very uncomfortable based off of that. So then sometimes it kind of felt for me where I'm like, damn, I got to dumb it down a little bit just because I want to kind of at least have a good time, blend in a little bit, but then not, not make it feel as if like, I don't know, I'm doing too much, you know? So I think that's also something with me where it was kind of like even going back onto uh, events, it's kind of like, you know, we created spaces where people can actually dress up. And that was kind of like where my 
comfort level was at because I, whenever I step out, I want to look good. I want to be able to put on a suit or put on some pants and, 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 and look fly. But, you know, I think that's not the norm here where it's like, you know, you then have to create that type of experience. So that, that's something I just wanted to uh, piggyback off of. So why millennials are not interested in nightlife anymore? Um, <clears throat> when I was looking at looking, doing some research, I kept on seeing the same things come up. It's too expensive. We were talking about it before. Um, if you're not the plug at the club, or you don't know the DJ, or if you don't know the security guard and stuff, you're waiting in line, you gotta pay $10 to get in. And once you pay that $10 to get in, it takes you about five minutes to get to the bar. When you get to the bar, it takes about 10 minutes for you to actually get a good drink. And then when you get a drink, you're like, okay, well, I gotta pay. I'm trying to, since I'm first up in the, in the front, I gotta make sure all my other people are good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and at least pay for their drinks as well. So that way we, they don't have to wait, but then they never send you the, the Vimo back to, get, to pay you, you know what I'm saying? Ah! <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I just, I'm just describing the experience, you know? So, and then after you don't get the Vimo paid back and then it's always like, damn, well, I just ended up spending a hundred dollars and I only got one drink. So that's just one thing of, uh, you know, people are not fully connected or they don't have the guest list or they don't know somebody that can actually relate to help them experience that nightlife and stuff. A lot of people complain saying that it's very expensive for them to actually do that. And that's just for one night. Imagine going out on a Friday night, Saturday night, or sometimes even on a Thursday. Um, another thing was that it was too impersonal. Too impersonal being that when you get off of work on that Friday, you've been working from Monday through Friday, you want to see your friends, you want to link up with them, but it's very hard to have a conversation with those people when you go out to a place where you can't really sit down and have that, that time with them, you know? Um, a lot of people get kind of lost in the sauce and they kind of like, they go off and they wander off and do their own thing once they get to that club, uh, which kind of ties into that uh, creating anxiety. Once they get in, they see all the lights, they see all the, so much people together, no personal space or anything. Um, and a lot of people kind of try to steer away from that. Um, safety and health concerns, that kind of goes a lot more for uh, both men and women, of course, but I think more so uh, particularly with women when they kind of feel like they're not going to go out to places where they feel like they're going to be grabbed or touched inappropriately. They feel like they're going to be around guys that are very, are, are creeps. Uh, and they want to be in a place that is, is safe for them. So they feel like, you know, the best way to do that is just to be around the girls, do a girl's night, save some money, buy, buy a 10 bottle, 10 bottle, uh, $10 bottle of wine, drink, and, you know, crash and go from there, you know, talk, talk their talk and, and have a good time. And then obviously they're just tired. They've been working all week and they kind of want to just catch up on rest to be able to uh, uh, be productive into the next week. So. Uh, that was a that was a main thing. But if anybody does anybody feel like there's something else that did you want a mic or you're good? Okay, cool. Yeah. I feel more so that like so I wanna have a good time and I take all the things that I can but I feel like it's more so that I've experienced yeah. personal win. I agree. I, I remember when uh, I went to Q and I asked how much it cost for a section. It was like a thousand dollars. I was like, all right, well, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'll be I'll be at the de- I'll be on the desk floor, you know. Though I was gonna say your experience is different than some people's experience at Q, clearly, because yeah. they be having bottles and charging motherfuckers all types of shit in Q. Yeah. Exactly. Like well, that but you don't have a bottle. That, yeah. yeah, that's presentation for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's presentation. It's because Q is twice the size right. of stadium, it's but the layout, it's because the presentation. The layout of the actual club. The bottle service is actually in the back of the room at Q. So if you were a patron at the club, unlike, say, in L.A., if you went to, you know, like Hyde or Playhouse, where all of the main tables are in front of the DJ booth right in the front, right? So if somebody comes and spends $2,000 and gets six bottles, everyone sees it. We do have, you know, candles and flashers and signs at Q, but if you're facing the DJ in front of the club, you'd never see it. And so it's, it's right in front of you, right? So um, went, up to, went up to this next slide, and uh, it was pretty much all about where are people going. Like I said, I'll make this all available, so you don't even got to worry. I'm going to break it down for you, bro. Bruh. <laughs> what does it, it say? Uh, so pretty much it was like, where, where are people, where are the millennials going instead? A lot of them, uh, they miss that house party nostalgia. They, they, they want to be able to be in a place where it's a little bit more intimate. They want to go to bars. They want to go to lounges. They want to go to somewhere that is going to be a little bit more intimate to the point that they can have these conversations and stuff that they've been missing out on, something that may be a little bit more cheaper. Um, a lot of people have complained saying that um, they used to be able to go to the clubs and um, want to experience or hear new music. And a lot of people in Seattle haven't been able to fulfill that, 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 that thing for them. I was trying to think of the word. I couldn't. <laughs> but, um, uh, but they, they couldn't. They, they, they've been kind of feeling as though the DJs aren't able to be able to deliver that type of uh, uh, experience for them. Because I remember when I used to go to, <clears throat> when I was in clubs in Atlanta, I go to the club and I'm hearing new stuff that's dropping to the point that I'm pulling out my, my Shazam and I'm trying to figure out what this song is. Sometimes it may not even come up because it's just new. That, you know? That's what should be happening. Yeah, you know, but I feel like now it's been getting to the point where it's like I can, I can guess a lot of people's set lists and I know exactly what they're going to be playing every Friday or Saturday or Thursday or Monday. Or what I'm, I'm getting, What I'm getting out of a lot of this is comfort. That's just what I'm getting out of yeah, a lot of this, yeah, this comfort. Yeah. I mean, well, think about it. We're all creatives. We're all trying to chase something. Everybody's working multiple jobs nowadays. You don't, like, the weekend comes, you want to chill out. Despite your, despite your age, like, you just want to chill with your friends. Like, that's what I enjoy. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so busy throughout the week that when it comes to the weekend, no, I don't want to spend any money. I just paid all this rent and this car note. Yeah. I just want to buy a $10 bottle of wine and have the homies come over yeah. and laugh, not have anybody all up in our face, not have, not be solicited anything at the club. You just want to be able to chill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. In a, a club or where you're at, sometimes they give you bar percentage so you could do free guest list all night, you know? But it just depends, like... Like the music, the music always got to be on point. When I hire my DJs, it got to be on point. Everything new coming out and stuff like that. Because people don't want to hear some mix a lot in the club, you know, just different vibes. But Capitol Hill is kind of different. But I've been to Q before. And like, if I'm not doing an event, that's a club I would go to probably to have a good time because no one's judging you or no, there's no bottles in your face and stuff like that, you know. But when I throw an event, I want to have, I want everyone to have a good experience, you know. Yeah. When you come in, you're not treated like, shit you know what i'm saying or like you can't come in because you're wearing those jordans you know yeah. i want everybody like he said i want everybody to come comfortable i feel like everybody in seattle is just a comfortable city like you want to come with your hoodies and you know your new sweats your jordans all that so you don't want to feel like you're not you know wanted at a club so yeah yeah did you want to say anything are you good okay so even before before we move on to the next slide just out of show of hands who how many people believe that nightlife here is just getting worse Okay. My life is getting worse. So what, why do you think that? I agree. <laughs> Talk to me, bro. <laughs> Talk to me, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Mm-hmm. 
That's a number one hit, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> I was going to say, that's really cool to hear that because you don't. <laughs> They're catering to that for sure. Rhino Room is definitely the place to go for a tech person on a Friday, Saturday night. So it's you're not like what one of five clubs, play. you know, like there's so, not many choices, you know, Migos or whatever. That's Friday and Saturday, though, because that's their place to kick it on, on the weekends. Like, it's, we have to understand that this is their city now. This, they got the money. This, they, they're all moving here. So Capitol Hill is going to cater to that. Well, that side of Capitol Hill. I don't mean to counter you, Casey, but uh, the, San Francisco, Capitol Hill. San Francisco is just as much a tech city as Seattle, and they don't have that issue, though. So I think that part of it has to do with us as, as curators to create that experience. But that's a quick yeah, question. Yeah, can, can I get a show of hands of who moved here after they were 21? Okay. And the rest of you all from here? When did you move here? Okay. After, before you were 21? You've been, so you've been here for a minute, though. Okay. 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 Right. So in Alabama, did you ever go out, out there before you were 21? Okay. So do you have the example from there to say that this is not what is doing, what's happening out there? You do? Of course. Absolutely. Right. Yep, I 100% understand that. Yep, I feel that. So I was asking that question because I'm just curious for everyone that raised their hand, um, I'd assume that all of you have been here for about at least three years, four years, five years? Okay, so five years ago, I'm sure you guys remember there being a lot more options and this issue currently of there being maybe not the greatest music being played, not being a problem. Is that, would you say that's correct? That there was definitely better curated music than it was before. And now it seems to be that you hear the same repetitive junk that you hear on the radio. And, right. So I, I, again, I, I think that it's less of a, it becoming a tech city and us not having, you know, more options in this place or that place then it's just really us as creators just needing to do a better job. I really, I really think that's what it boils down to. I think it does fall upon the creators too. I think there's that, which is on us, but then I also think there's the inevitable aspect of the, like, because we didn't grow up with the internet yeah, and all this yeah, shit, I mean, man. The elephants in the room, it's, it's obviously becoming what it is as a city, you know, but that doesn't mean that it's completely going to no, change the fact not. that we can, we can, you know, and, and other, like I said, the Bay Area is a great example where it's 100% Texas, just like Seattle, but they have as much culture. And when it comes to like that kind of stuff, like, of course, it's changing like a big club there named Mezzanine that I used to always do stuff that just closed or they're going to close on New Year's Eve. But the places that still exist are still doing the same music that they were doing 10 years ago. And pushing the envelope that way because they're saying we don't give a fuck about all these people moving in that aren't from here that don't appreciate our culture or respect the fact that we do it how we do it. And they keep playing that way. They're not going to change and cater to whatever else is coming in. I think that obviously as a city that way when it comes specifically to club culture, which a lot of times is synonymous with hip-hop culture and black culture, we obviously have less of that than the Bay Area does. But I think that we just need to think about that in a way that we can, you know, we can counteract the inevitability of what's going to happen or what's already happened to the city. I feel like we are, though, as creative, we are, like, between all four of us right here, including Anthony, shout out to Biva and Parker over there. Like, everyone is doing their job. Right. I think the difference between here and San Francisco as well is there are more people of color there. There's, there's more of an army there to protect their culture than there are here. So many people are moving away to, uh, to those places and things like that where our army of people to defend our sound, our, you know, our original culture, 
and stuff like that is just kind of dimming down. It's like we can't fight as hard as we could when we were a bigger army. Yeah. So many people are gone. Well, did, did you want to say something, Biva? Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that there's, there is like kind of a mm. So that kind of answers your question. Well, it's not even to yourself. It's just like as a DJ, when you're in the booth, you're working, you have to, you have to do, so a lot of these crowds is tech crowds. They, they want to hear it's getting hot in here and all this shit that, which, which is a great record, but you, you, I'm just saying that it's not like they're not breaking new records. They're not playing shit that people don't know because then everyone's going to sit there and go, I don't know this. It's, it's a certain type of crowd that wants to hear new records and then like continue, Biba, continue. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. For real. That's a fact. Biba, you wanna you wanna see? <laughs> you wanna go ahead? Yeah, go ahead. I know you did you wanna say something? Yeah. I hear you, Biba, for real. Yeah. 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 That was a different time for sure. It's not like that anymore. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I hear you. I agree. So, did you want to say something? Like that? So, for those that were saying that nightlife was getting worse, um, I want this mostly aimed at panelists first. And uh, from there, if anybody else is kind of like actively in the nightlife uh, scene, I kind of want to just get your opinion on this. So the question is, are you still doing what you're doing for your reputation or are you doing it for the check? Um, you're kind of judged based off affiliation. So the reason why I kind of ask this question is because you can say a Q, for example, we'll use Q. Uh, you go to Q on a Friday night, let's say that the music is not popping, but you are actively working at Q and you represent Q as an establishment, but also as a person that provides a service. When you're there and you hear the people saying, man, Q is trash. I don't really want to go there on Fridays because of this, that, and the third. And you take that in. What is your response? Are you still going to be doing it because this is something that you actually like to do for your reputation? Or, of course, are you still doing it just for the check? What would you say is that, 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 that balance for you? Yeah, I mean, there has to be a happy medium. I, I would never do anything just for the check. Like, if, yeah. I, if I don't like what I'm doing, I'm not rocking with it 100%. Yeah. That's just always how I'm always going to be, no matter what. And um, not gonna, you know, not gonna sway from that at all. Uh, but I think again, it's it's one of those things where if the consumer is telling you that something's not working, I think that you just have to be vocal, or not vocal, but you have to be receptive to to them saying that, and and just you know be able to adapt that way. Yeah. Um, with our Friday at Q with Pop Secret, we've made it a point to try to to you know kind of push the envelope with music, mm -hmm. and you know it's it's obviously an uphill battle. You know, as as Bieber put it, and and as my man right here mentioned, with you know, artists getting with they getting us getting older, and artists you know kind of quote unquote getting older and like kind of stopping. I don't think that's the case. I think that that everyone that's still that was making 
you know, music and art before, everyone's still doing it. Yeah. It's just a matter of, and that goes back again to what people were saying that there's obviously a fine line there with, with Q, for example, you know, with, with any place like that, that's a business, there's always going to be a tug of war from the creative side and the business side, because they have to meet a bottom line, obviously, right. In a city like Seattle, where yeah. unfortunately in general, everything is expensive right now. So you have to kind of toe that line carefully and really think about what you do. So sometimes, you know, you're not always going to be able to do every cool thing that you want to do. And you just have to be able to accept that. And yeah. in that regard, take that L with a, the, the crowd, right? If the crowd, if you book somebody that is someone that you have to book yeah. um, because, you know, it's just, you know, it's going to sell out. It's going to be good, but it might not be the most innovative thing ever. Well, it's going to have to happen just for that one time. But then next week might be something that's crazy. So what you have yeah. to do at that point is just navigate, getting your crowd to understand that they can trust you, that whatever you do is going to be good. And just, just rock with you long-term, not think about what's happening this weekend and then that's it. Yeah. And a lot of times that's tough because people always stay at the same place. Um, 70%. Yeah. If it's, if it's something like a monthly event where people know that's always going to be good, some people literally wait all month just for that one thing. And they might miss out on this, 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 this. Or they choose between this or that because of the fact that, you know, regardless of if they get in for free or not or whatever, like to, just to go out in general, it's going to cost money. You're going to go get dinner. Right. You're going to drink this or that. You're going to go catch an Uber somewhere to somebody's house and link up. Uber back to the club, Uber home at the end of the night, whatever else the case is. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just kind of just really thinking about it, being receptive to everything that's happening and just really just, you know, paying attention to the market in general. I agree. Anybody just want to add anything else to that real quick? That's all right. All right, so <clears throat> when I asked earlier if nightlife was getting worse, a couple of people rose their hands. So I'm going to go under the assumption that everybody else feels that they're just getting too old to party. Can I get a raise of hands if people feel that they are getting a little bit too old to party? It's okay. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> they're getting a little bit too old to party. All right. Wait. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead uh, if you want to say something. I think the thing is uh -huh. He did. That's literally what I was just going to say. I was like, I don't even feel like I'm getting older. I just feel like I don't seek the same things, right? Like, because I can still go kick it if I want, but it's just I don't have the same type of fun. I be I, I stay on the tequila, so I'm usually good with the hangovers. You know that? It all it's all relative, though, for real. Uh, so you yeah, I, I think I think that um I think it's really neither. Um, I don't think that we're getting older personally because thinking about it just in just kind of general terms, not to get like super scientific about it, but millennials in general are pretty nomadic, right? So no one that, or majority of people aren't out here like trying to buy a house and just be at their house all the time in general. Millennials move about, people get jobs and move elsewhere and do this and that, right? So everyone's always kind of all over the place. It's not like you turn 35 and you don't go out and get drinks with your friends. I think we're, we, we, we're too stuck on the idea of like, nightlife is just going to a big ass club with loud ass music like there's bars there's art events there's yeah there's there's summertime beer festivals and, and night markets and all kind of stuff that's all that's all under the umbrella of nightlife so i don't think that we're getting too old to do those things yeah. you can go out to the dog park with a beer and hang out with your people and go yeah. see your friend that has a dog too yeah. you're 30 you're 36 years old doing i guess that's you're going out Okay. Whatever it might be, you know what I mean? I don't think it has to be like going to clubs anymore, but I don't think that we're getting too older in that regard because right. in general, millennials kind of are all over the place anyways. Okay. Um, here, as far as it dying, I just think that right now, and that goes back to like we as millennials also don't necessarily have control of things that way. So, you know, if, if place is close here, for everyone that isn't, you know, necessarily from here from 10 years ago, we don't have a single bar or club in Belltown right now. That place used to have... 12 places to go 
Capitol Hill had, you know, six, seven different clubs that were actual clubs, along with all the bars that still exist. Those don't exist anymore. Uh, in Soto, you know, Aston Manor just closed. And, you know, a lot of these places could be considered janky or whatever, or whack to certain people, or that's a gross scene or whatever. It's just the fact that there were options. And so I don't think the nightlife is dying. I just think that we have a, a, a less amount of options. And that doesn't mean that it's dying. That's just, that's from a business perspective, not right. from the actual events that are still happening. Because yeah. whenever people that were doing stuff that this place that closed or that place that closed, they, they, they're doing it other places. There's less, op there's less places to go do it, but they're doing stuff in other places. I mean, Lace started his Afrobeat thing, what, a couple of years ago? A year ago. A year ago, even less. And, and obviously, there's way less places to go now, but that's a whole new event series with a whole new type of music that has not really been in Seattle before. So if anything, I feel like we're being more innovative now. With, with Day Shift and Lemonade, with the Posse crew, you guys are doing stuff for, what, three years now? Three, four years. So everything that's been happening, that's all new stuff. That all happened after TLU was closed and Aston Manor closed and uh, what was the bar in uh, Capitol Hill on the backside? 95 Slide closed. There's, there's like six or seven larger places that closed, but there's new event series that are happening. Mm. So I don't think that's dying. I just think that, again, we're looking at it from a, the wrong kind of scope and also thinking of it in a way that if you're always at the same place, like we said in the first place that you're not going to see what's happening yeah really yeah, being consistent with like bringing artists up here that's what i try to do bring special guests or something keeping it you know keeping the flow different you know two dollar you know taco tuesdays we sell food at stage you know just keeping it intrigued with the different audiences and stuff like that or having like latin night on that side and you know hip-hop on that side you know just kind of keeping it spicy and you just got to just try new things so like i said like down south that's why it's so popping down there. They have hookah in their clubs, and we can't have that. We have different rules up here, you know what I'm saying? Our strippers in the club, we can't have that, you know what I'm saying? So that's what everybody's moving down there. And you know what? It's about bringing different people, like the marketing, the promo, the video, bringing the bad bitches. Like, that's what people want to see. And honestly, everybody's moving down south, you know, because we don't got that up here, you know? Yeah. So it's trying to bring that vibe up here. So that's yeah. what I try to do, yeah. yeah everybody's moving down south because it's cheap. It is cheaper for sure. So I know you guys may have answered a little bit of it, but just for. Uh, just for the sake of the panel, um, what was the bar, the club, or the lounge that made you realize that this was no longer for you? If you guys are not actively uh, wanting to participate in <laughs> in nightlife, and I think we could be brash if we want. I, I kind of we can talk about it. If you, I mean, if you guys don't want to say anything, you can. Anybody else want to say something? I, I mean, I can say something. Oh, you want? Did you want to go? Ahead? Yeah. So, I wouldn't say, but I think it just made me that type of place with myself. Mm. So, uh, uh, next to the W, uh, uh, the living room? Are you talking about downstairs? Uh, Pearl? Lucky Strike? Lucky Strike, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when we went, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 I think uh, for the most part, for me, um, it's pretty much dealing with any place that I just felt like it was just, I just felt claustrophobic in. So kind of like, you know, you could say, uh, what is that spot called? Uh, now, now, now or never? 
downstairs in Rhino Room. I also felt in Rhino Room, I kind of, I haven't been there in like, wow, a long time. Because I also felt like the way that it was just set up is like the bar is bigger than the dance floor. So it's like, why, like, why are you trying to pack this place out, you know? So, and that kind of gave me the, the reason where I was like, man, this shit is whack. But, <laughs> but, but you know, I, I know that there's a lot of people that still go there and stuff like that and have a great time. Uh, but for me, it was kind of like just one of those where I was like, I kinda, I'm kind of over this. I'm more, I kind of, I kind of like to exist within the lounge space, not necessarily to have to stand up and be at the bar and stuff like that. And not that I have to be at the club and go crazy, fist bump and turn up. But I like to be in a place where I can actually, I can sit down, I can, I can converse, I can, you know, I can still hear some good music. And that's why I was, I was a big hookah fan when I was down South. And, you know, that's where it was like, you can, you can smoke hookah, you can eat, you can drink and you could, rally before you actually go to the club you're you know? making me think about i'm like for me it's like why why would you ever go i, I don't understand when people be in the club complaining right. yeah. i'm like what are you doing <laughs> what why'd you come like why'd you do all this shit to come in here and then complain you see what i'm saying yeah, yeah. i'm never that person because well, maybe sometimes I am, but <laughs> I'm rarely that person because I'm going to pick I'm going to pick the right battles. Like, yeah. you know, what I'm saying I'm not going to go somewhere where I know what the jug is and I'm in there and then I'm like complaining about the jug. Yeah. It don't make think, no sense. I think, honestly, I think it's been one of those things where I'd be running into that a lot yeah. where I'm like, well, why are you here, bro? You knew what it was going to be. Go home. I yeah. can say I can say I can still I still as far as club goes, I can probably count on probably about five spots that I, I, I'll go to no matter what. But there's times where even those five clubs, based off maybe the nights or the vibe or stuff, I still, I'm still like, damn, I should have never even been here. Although last week it was really popping, you know? So I think it kind of, you know, it kind of just all depends with that. It, I think it's on you as someone that goes out to be like, okay, I'm going to take a chance tonight on some shit that I don't really know about. Yeah. And then if you're that person who's in there like, oh, I don't really fuck with this, that's more fair to me because you're, you took a chance and you tried yeah. some shit that you didn't know. Yeah. But I don't, 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 don't go to stuff you know you're not going to like. But I think that was, that, that's the experience itself. That's where it comes down. To it comes like down to you. To test it Make out. Make the right test choices, it out and man. See. But also, you know, you, you fall into that place where it's like you got friends that want to peer pressure you into kind of like going into a space where it's like you succumb. Oh, no. you, that's you succumb into the peer pressure. Ah, yeah, you're right. That's all that it is. Because right. if you are gonna, all oh, my friends are going to club I don't like, and you go and you're that friend in the club complaining, why'd you do that? Just yeah. stay your ass home. Yeah. yeah, that's valid. That's valid. Did you? No, he says. Mm. Agreed. I never understood that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why go out? Go, stay home. Like, yeah. I mean, like I said in the beginning, I don't have an expectation. I had an event on Friday and it was raining Mike, hella Mike, hard. Mike, Mike, Mike. I knew it was hella people weren't able to come just because it was raining so hard. If it wasn't my event, to be honest, I probably wouldn't have went out. And I still had a good ass time because mm. I had, I just didn't, I, I knew I had to have a good time because yeah. I was out. I was going to enjoy myself. I didn't set that high expectation for myself. Yeah. You want to finish, bro? Go ahead. Yeah. That's true. That's valid. That's valid. That's valid. That's valid. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got some? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I know generally it's like millennials. Millennials spend a lot of money. Yeah. So, I don't think it's ever a problem of like paying. So, like, even, like, I, that was where I was in my life. And DC's popping. $20 covers, and I was broke. Yeah. And I was having a good time. I came out here. Uh, and yeah, not a lot of places where I could 
they cover the you know, but it's just totally different as far as all right well if i have to pay i know it's not going to be as good as something that would be yeah yeah i agree I agree. So this was one of the random questions I had. I think it's the only random question I have. Uh, what is a gatekeeper and how has a gatekeeper prevented you from curating an event or experience that you know people will love? I know a lot of people talk about gatekeepers. I talk about gatekeepers all the time because they never let me do the shit that I want to do. And I feel like it's going to be really a great time. But um, I guess I could go ahead and just start it off with that random Oh, I saw, oh, I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. Um, but yeah, what is a gatekeeper? And how has a gatekeeper prevented you from curating an event or experience that you know people will love? I, okay. Yeah. So I don't like the term gatekeeper. Um, I feel like people, when they hear no, they get, they get mad because they want something. Um, so they're just like, you're a gatekeeper. You're not letting me through. Um, but I don't, I don't really like the term. Um, actually, this is something I learned uh, recently was hearing no doesn't mean like no, it just means not right now. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says no to you for you not to throw an event or something like that at their space, um, don't get mad and call them a gatekeeper and say you're stopping me from doing whatever. It's just let's have a conversation okay. about this and tell me why so that next time I ask you, you can let me through this door. Mm -hmm. um, a gatekeeper is somebody who has power that abuses it. That's how I look at gatekeepers. Mm. Um, somebody called me a gatekeeper the other day on Twitter, and I went in. I was so pissed. I was like, don't fucking call me that. Mm. Wow. I don't okay. abuse my power. Yeah. I'm very, very selfless with the platform that I have. So just don't call me that. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh. yeah I, don't, I don't really like the term. Um, I feel like we probably have heard that a lot. In, in the city over the years but um i i don't know i don't i don't think that um i think it's re i think it's a real thing but i don't i don't i don't think it affects you if you don't let it affect you um i think just thinking about in in general terms of like the entertainment world in seattle yeah. i think i probably worked with almost all of the gatekeepers in the city oh. and <clears throat> they've not stopped me from doing anything in any kind of a way. I think the only way that anyone could really be considered a gatekeeper in my eyes is if you actually take the idea that someone's doing, like prevent them from doing it and then do the exact same thing. And I Which really, I've seen many times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I'm just saying it hasn't happened to me. But well, that's, that's great for you. Right, right. And, and yeah, if, it, if it's happened, I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I'm just saying I definitely think that's the only way that you can say that someone is a gatekeeper is if that happens. Yeah. And if it has happened, obviously, it's fucked up. <laughs> Without putting it any other way, it's not it's exclusive to here. That's just how yeah, business. That's, yeah, be. and that's a normal yeah. thing, anyways. You know, like obviously, intellectual property is is always being compromised across right. the world. That's just is what it is. Yeah. But it doesn't have to stop you. It hasn't. I don't think it stopped any of us in any kind of way. I agree. Not on a, not on a macro level, obviously. On right. a micro level, I, the only way I see it is like. Especially, like I said, getting into the Afrobeat stuff, which is super like popular now. But e even a year ago, when I was doing it, like no one was fucking with it. Um, and I would take, you know, so Kina can was has been there with me through a lot of this shit, just taking ideas to places and then not fucking with it. And then a year later, when they see shit's popping, they're hitting me like, oh, you know. And I'm like, that's corny, bro. Like, you, you, what, what's different about it now? Like, you just see money in it. So that's the yeah. only form of gatekeeping I see is when cats are not fucking with you because they don't see nothing in it for themselves. And then when something gets popular, I think that's I think that's on. less gatekeeper and more opportunist, though, yeah. because that's that's the general thing I think that happens here is that you have some of the people who happen to be in that kind of decision position where it's like if it's the club owner or whoever the overarching person is that here's what we're going to do and it's going to work. And then. That, that shit doesn't work, work, and then they call you back. That can go into that realm. Later. Right, yeah. right. But you're right. It's not necessarily gatekeeper. It's just like, when I see this question, that's what it makes me think of the most. It's yeah. just tre trendy shit. Yeah. When yeah. it's not trendy, it's been tight, but now you're just catching on. I agree. Willie, did you have anything? You want to say something? Just like Casey said, don't get offended. Take your business somewhere else, and then they're going to see you. So, yeah. I, you don't have to argue with nobody. You know, you know what you want to do. You got to plan for it, and then they call you three months later and say, hey. And then that's when you give them the total, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but it's really not Facts. about the money, but at the end of the day, 
it's just a lifestyle thing. You know, people don't see the vision that you see. So yeah. you got to go somewhere else with it, you know? Yeah. I agree. They tell me to run it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you have anything to do, Okay, cool, cool. So uh, this was one of the last questions that I had. And we're about, um, we're, we got about 10, 10 15 minute ish. Um, now that we've said everything that we got to say, um, what is, what is it that we're missing that other cities have and that how can we add that onto our community with respect to what we can do in Seattle? What are the things that we can, we can start moving forward and doing to make this happen? <laughs> I, <laughs> you see my slide, oh my gosh. <laughs> we're definitely missing a lot, I told you guys. We're missing strippers, hookah, wings, bad bitches, you know what I mean? <laughs> like just the culture, everything, the artists, every two weeks, every week. When I go to Atlanta, there's an artist in the club every day. I'm like, yo, they charge 80 bucks. I don't know how they do it. They charge 80 bucks at the door for guys, 40, 20 for girls probably. Yeah. But they make so much money. The hookah, because the lifestyle is cheap down there, you know, yeah. in the day. But Monday through Sunday, you go out any day, it's popping. Like you can go on a Sunday, not a Friday. You feel me? Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's just like, like I said, the bad bitches, the hookah and the wings. That's it. In a week. <laughs> what is it missing? Yeah, what are we? What can we do? What are we missing? I feel like what we can add. What we've been we add? Uh, addressing it pretty yeah. much. Like yeah. we're doing yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And <laughs> I, don't know, I, I mean, I, I don't want to sound like a broken fucking record out here, man. It's yeah. just missing culture, bro. It's yeah. just yeah. straight up. Okay. Cool. Cool. You glad to be. I'm just going to ask, we only have, what, about a dozen people here. I want to ask every single person, what do you think is missing? Yeah, Shoot two. What do, you, what do you think it's missing? Do we want to give the mics? Do we want to give them the mics? Go ahead. Get, no, yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. Do we want to do the mics? Do we want to we'll, do just, the mics? we'll just go down the line. Just ask everybody what, what they do think is missing. <laughs> it's not the case here. Yeah. See? Speak in my language. You are the perfect consumer. Well. So your answer is Seattle nightlife is missing smart people. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Okay, cool. Mm. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. That's deeply cultural, though. That's like, yeah. it's not like that here over here in the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hear you. I hear both of you guys for sure. Yeah. What about you what about two? You guys, you guys want to add some? You guys are. You guys. Are, there's a culture. Yeah, culture. Like literal space. Say lack of space spaces to go. Definitely one of those things. Yeah. Like feeling claustrophobic type shit. You mean like like no space or op options? Uh, yeah, more venues, yeah. Mm. It's always based on that shit. Another spot that closed. Mm. 
That's a hell of a good input, bro. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Love City Love is a great example of somewhere that was very much more experiential than it was a place that was a just straight, you know, yeah. consumer melting pot. Yeah. And we need more spaces like that for sure. Yeah. That shit took a lot of work to create that space it too. Is. So it's it like it's, people need to step up and right. do that type of work. Exactly. What do you guys think? Anybody want to add something? You guys already said cross support, cross support. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop everybody for just a second just to touch on something because that's one of the really important things that I didn't want to touch too much on it because for, for any of my peers that, that, you know, associate with me in any kind of way, you guys know I've been probably saying this for way too long, but there's not enough, um, not even, it doesn't have to be collaboration. There's not enough support. I can say for myself, just individually, I've pretty much worked everywhere with everyone. And I know from the different pockets of people that I've worked with that people specifically will not work with other people for whatever reason it might be. Sometimes it's obviously a valid reason and sometimes it's just for just the, the lack of not wanting to for whatever reason that might be and kind of stick into their own pocket that way. And um, I think that definitely trickles down into the consumer being the same way because if you as a creator are a person that will only be at this place or that place and choosing these select locations of spaces and only hire your homies every and only time hire your people only ever forever all the time eventually all of your guests that come to see you and then meet you tend to then take on that same energy and that yep. same you know like process basically so that happens a lot. I have a friend actually just moved up here from Portland. He works in the sneaker industry. And he was asking me that exact question. He's like, why don't people work more often together here? Why do I not see so-and-so come over here? So-and-so, they have the night off. And I asked him to come over here with me. And they just told me, no, nah, I don't really go over there. Well, why not? There's, there's pretty much, you know, maybe six different factions of groups in the city that do things that way creatively when it comes to entertainment nightlife whatever that might be events type stuff right and uh yeah i you know i i feel fortunate to have friends and associates and colleagues on every side of that but i definitely know people that make it a point not to cross over that way and that is something that i think again as you know i, I try to get, put the responsibility back on us and that's why i wanted to ask everyone what they think we should do better and that's a great point because i don't think that we do enough of that i think you're right i don't know sure. how to fix that though that's that's hard that's one of those yeah. things that that's a personal choice that you can't fix because if this person is this way and they're just starting and then they get to the point where they're now you know at the top of the mountain but they continue to be that way well yeah. they're only going to be on one side of the mountain forever Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah. the inclusivity has to, has to get better so, from all sides. So I know we're about to wrap up because we got to be out of here by uh, in the next three minutes. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, um, I want to just say thank you, everybody. Uh, this is uh, – they both good shows, though, too, yes. you know? <laughs> 
I always put this in every one of my presentations. Uh, <laughs> final thoughts, yeah. So, uh, yeah, final thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, from what, I, <laughs> so pretty much, pretty much what I'm getting from all of this is that you know a lot of this change that we're all speaking about is going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort, but we do have to also not only build on culture, but we do have to build on collaboration. Um, there's a lot of people that I've wanted to work with, uh, but I haven't been able to. There's a lot of people that also don't support what I got going on, um, which I do understand. I kind of see it. But, you know, that, that's the game. That, that, it is what it is. But, you know, as long as I'm, I'm here and as long as you guys are here and everybody else that is kind of in these spaces that are really willing to collaborate and stuff, then I think we can make the best of it for as, however long we'll be here. So, um, you guys want to kind of just give off your social medias where people can find you and then we can go ahead and uh, adjourn. Yeah, no. All right. So you can follow me at Miss Casey Carter. I do want to shout out. I do have a party series called For the 99 and 2000s. Hey. It's a quarterly event. Anthony's actually hosted the event. We play nothing but throwback music. It was lit. Um, so one's coming up the day before Thanksgiving. And then we also have a party series called Seattle to Seoul where we play Korean and American hip hop. Hey. Uh, so make sure to pull up to that. And then I'm just always a part of different events. So just follow me on Instagram at Miss Casey Carter. Well. Uh, you guys can follow me on everything at McLaren, uh, like the car, M-C-C-L-A-R-R-O-N. And uh, you guys can find me on Fridays at Q Nightclub. Uh, we have some really, really dope stuff coming up real soon. Um, again, a lot of different music for a lot of different, you know, different strokes for different folks. So please come by. Holler at me if you guys want to come too, you know, as far as that whole hurdle of paying to get in and stuff like that. Let's, let's try and fix that. So if you guys want to come, you can personally ask me, and I'll make sure it gets, it gets done. Let's do it. Uh, Lace Cadence is my handle. It's uh, L-A-C-C-A-D-E-N-C-E. -E. Uh, check out my band, The Flavor Blue. Shout out my guy Parker over there. Check out Posse Life, too, doing great events. Um, check me out last Thursdays at Sugar Hill. It's my Afrobeat night trap house. Um, this next Thursday is actually landing on Halloween, so that's going to be tight. That'll be very fun. You'll see Anthony and many of us there. Let's get it. Yeah. You can follow me on um, Lily Million, L-I-L-Y, and the last name Million, or Miami underscore Fling. It's in the bio. And then I have an event for Halloween. It's free at Canterbury Owl House on Capitol Hill. And then I have an event November 1st at stage, and then November 16th at the same place, Cantier, uh, Barry Owl. But it's all on my uh, Instagram, so you guys can follow me on there. Awesome. Okay, cool. So uh, no that's pretty excuses. much no excuses. Thank you guys. Thank you guys pretty much. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Thank you guys. You guys. A round, round of applause. Yeah. yeah, no problem. All right, so since it is now...